Are you looking for a stress-free summer? HelloFresh sends you foolproof step-by-step -step recipes and fresh pre-portioned ingredients to make mealtimes a summer breeze. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code MLM16 at hellofresh.com MLM16. Shelby Ellibracht thought this candle would be just like any other. She went to Walmart looking for a relaxing and calming scent to add to her home. She picked up a candle created by Luminex, a company that relies on party light and candle light to manufacture and sell their candles. After waiting for some time one day, she decided it was time to light the candle. Maybe she just wanted to relax or enrich her home with a sweet, calming scent. That's what candles are usually for after all. But what happened next was the furthest thing from a relaxing experience for Shelby. Instead of her home being engulfed with delicious smells and calming scents, she suddenly found that it was instead her candle that had been engulfed, in flames that is. Nothing around the candle had started the fire. It was in a room with no windows. It just caught on fire with no explanation in sight. Panicked, she watched as the flames from her new candle reached dangerous heights and got bad enough that they charred the top of her ceiling. Shelby did the first thing that came to mind and threw the candle into the sink. You may think that this action would have solved her problem, but no, it actually got worse. Once in the sink, the candle exploded. Wax went flying around the room and Shelby was burned, suffering second degree burns on her legs. After recovering from the traumatic incident, she decided it was time to press charges. After all, candles shouldn't be literally exploding. It kind of defeats the point. Soon it would come out that it had happened more than once. In fact, it has happened quite a few times. Shelby was just the first to bring a class action lawsuit to the table. Party light candles have erupted in flames at direct selling parties, in bathrooms, all around the homes with no other explanation other than that they were just simply defective. But despite the lawsuit and numerous complaints, they are still sitting right there waiting on shelves or in factories to be purchased by unsuspecting consumers and sold by self-starters trapped in yet another direct selling company. So far, there's no result to the party light exploding candle lawsuit, but it's possible it was settled out of court. You would think that these types of events would cause party light to go up in smoke, but they persist. So what else is going on with the massive candle, decor, and scents direct selling company? And what exactly is party light, other than apparently a potential weapons manufacturer? Hello and welcome to another episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I'm the Illuminati and today we're gonna to be talking about the international candle, decor, and fragrance company, Party Light. While the company has been through a wide range of changes being bought, merged, and altered numerous times, they stuck strongly to their direct selling structure since the early 1970s. But that's not where it began. In fact, Party Light is actually over a hundred years old and its history begins with a woman who simply had a dream and a hobby. The year was 1909 and Mabel Baker was a school teacher living in Cape Cod. One day, she decided to start making the famous Bayberry candles she'd been hearing about her whole life. She went on her way, gathering berries and learning to make hand dipped candles, which at first she simply gifted to friends. But soon after years of practicing and marriage to her husband who owned a department store, she decided to open a store of her own. The Colonial Candle Company of Cape Cod and whew, my God, is that a lot of C's? I'm pretty sure that could turn into a tongue twister. But that company with many C's was born. From there, Mabel would become a household name and she sold some of the best candles in New England. And just one year later, her candles reached the big city. Boston. What started as a hobby suddenly turned Mabel Baker into a household name. She continued her work until she was 93 years old. By the time she passed away, she had grown her once simple candle making operation into a $6 million business. Considering this was the 1970s, that is absolutely insane. And if you'd like to compare that to 2022 dollars, that's worth about $45 million today. So yeah, dear old Mabel Baker was rolling in the dough and she did it without the often exploitative direct selling method. But unfortunately, after her death, the candle company took a sudden turn. As more women started to join the workforce and others became interested in opening their own business and working from home, Party Light was born. They immediately adopted the direct selling method, stepping away from relying on companies to advertise and sell their products to relying and exploiting the work of individuals for their own massive gains. The new company, Party Light, got its start in 1973. Based in Plymouth, Massachusetts, they set off to sell what they advertised as being high quality candles and their holders. Soon, the company took off. But their lengthy story hasn't been one without changes and acquisitions. They've switched ownership and gone through many mergers within their lengthy history. 
In the 1990s, they became a subdivision of a massive, the largest, by the way, candle manufacturer in the United States, Blythe Incorporated. But in 2020, they switched up their teams after their success had been on a decline to join up with another candle company, Candlelight, under the name Luminex. They go through more changes than Comcast, I swear to God. Now, Candlelight had its own long, strong history and call themselves America's original candle company. It was founded by Thomas J. Emery in 1840 after he migrated from England. Soon, he created a small workshop, hand dipping his own candles. Within just 10 years, the candles had soon become a national treasure. And as the industry started to explode, they became mass producible and affordable to the public. Over 100 years later, Emery candles would become Candlelight, the new company experimented with adding fragrance to candles, one of the many steps that led to them becoming less of a necessity or a luxury and more of a relaxing home staple that we see today. The merger with Candlelight and Party Light formed one massive candle super company. Soon, they would pull together their funds of over $12 million to create their own ginormous factory to combine their operations. Cornering the candle market, it seems, was their absolute objective. But through all the changes and growth, Party Light's strategy remained the same always relying on individuals to sell their product. Only now they could sell candlelight products as well. While the company continues to grow and expand their reach internationally, they gain new affiliates at a rapid pace, promising money, a debt-free life, and an ability for people to be true individual business owners. They even advertise their commitment to charities. And who wouldn't want to join a company that's committed to charity work? Their consultants can sign up to participate in the Relay for Life, and the company donates to charities like the American Cancer Society. They even set up a change the world program, which invited anyone to host a party or the guests of the candle extravaganzas to round up the purchases by a dollar or $10 to donate that to charity too. And while all of this is well and good, it doesn't tell the whole story. The American Cancer Society has its own special list of issues like embezzlement, misappropriating funds and nepotism. They aren't really considered the pat yourself on the back type of charity. Then there's the fact that these donations are both tax deductible and can be used as a special marketing strategy to further pull people in. And I mean, think about it. How many companies do you see that just overtly advertise that they donate to charity? How much do they actually donate? How much does it compare to their net value? It may not be as impressive as it should be, but it is one hell of a marketing strategy. But beyond the charity donations used as marketing tools, there's the false claims of the perfect lives for their consultants. Are they really living the wonderful lives the company portrays? Paying their debts, working with charities, and earning a full-time living? No, of course they're not. Income equals choice. That's the first thing that appears when you open an old advertisement video with people suggesting you join the Party Light team. Everyone is a business person whose life seems to have gotten spontaneously better the second they join the company. I paid off all my debt. That's my biggest choice for joining Party Light. I hate having my sassy fake voice, but anyway. The first man tells the camera person in an interview that Party Light rid him of the hassle many of us face daily, debt. But he didn't stop after paying that off, of course. He continued on as the money was just rolling in, as he says. Another woman tells the camera how great it has been working for the company. She doesn't have to pay for babysitters or childcare anymore to go to work. And like the others, is apparently making some real good money. While the words that they say sound promising, there was something that caught my eye. And maybe I'm reading too far into this, but none of the people interviewed smiled and they didn't seem excited at all. Seriously, this was one of the most lackluster, emotionalist promotion videos I've ever seen. And just a bit of a red flag there for me, at least in my opinion. Like, I would think you'd want people to be like crazy excited for your company, maybe choose distributors that like, you know, don't look dead inside, but that's not the approach they took apparently. And I wasn't the only one that thought so. In June, 2017, Truth and Advertising conducted a study on every company that were members of the Direct Selling Association. And wouldn't you know it, they found that 97% of them were making false and unsubstantiated income claims to promote the company's business opportunity. They were either doing this directly or through their distributors. Of course, as you would suspect, Party Light was one of those companies. So maybe those dead eye videos were because they were lying. Who would have guessed? But maybe some people were enticed by the unexcited people in the videos. I mean, paying off your debt is definitely looking pretty damn good right now, especially for anyone with student loan debt, myself included. So they go to the website, excited for what they might find. There, all of the typical direct selling rhetoric is on a bright, full, colorful display. Join the team, they tell you, kickstart your career, this is a community full of people powering their own business and for the low yearly fee of just $50, you can be too. But those pesky little income statements seem to tell a bit of a different story. Let's say you're just starting out. 
you sell $250 your first week. Not bad, considering it's just candles, decor, and fragrance. You would expect a decent return, right? No, you are just such a lucky duck because $9.38 will be deposited into your bank account. But hey, maybe you crushed your sales and sold almost $750 the first week. That should at least cover your startup cost, right? Well, it doesn't do that either. Congratulations, $750 will earn you $37.50. Good job. And if you can keep that pace up, you can finally pay off your startup cost after a month. How kind of them. Now, eventually you might find yourself lucky enough to reach the $1,000 a month mark, but it's unlikely as that requires over $3,000 in sales. And of course, for you to recruit your friends and family to join in on the fun, naturally. Now, that amount of money could potentially be helpful as some cash could sit on the side. Maybe it could help you pay your debt, but full-time only income? Unfortunately, it's not doing much in this economy. Just like pretty much every other direct selling company ever made in the history of ever, they put all the pressure or blame on what they call their affiliates to make their own money. It all depends on your time, they tell you. You are in control of your own destiny. But with candles that literally explode and a crazy small percentage of your sales going back into your pocket, it's not really true. It's not on the individual, it's on the company. But the candle company doubles down and tries to draw you in with impressive aspects of the company. It's cruelty-free, it's American-made. They even have a cute little video where two women excitedly show the $500 in cash they made after recruiting people to join. Which by the way, the money they're flashing looks super fake and it doesn't look very convincing at all, but still, that's what they were trying to go for. So I don't think it's any surprise that over 45,000 people have joined the company, but it's clearly not all rainbows and butterflies. Beyond just the limited amount of money, there's some concerns within the company other than just, you know, exploding candles. Like, hey, what if you try to leave? What happens then? Well, for one person who decided to leave in one of the most petty ways I've ever seen in my life, it means getting sued by the giant conglomerate. Mary Grace Lewandowski was one of the few people that had successfully climbed up the ladder of the party light pyramid. She was the senior regional vice president with the company and had her own special group of salespeople that she thought would follow her wherever she went. So when she made the decision to leave one direct selling company for another, she held a barbecue to bring all her boss babes with her. In July, 2010, Mary Grace held one of everyone's favorite summer pastimes, only this time there was a twist. There, she made an announcement that she had decided to leave Party Light because she knew something that all of the other salespeople didn't. What this was, she refused to say, but she would tell a select group her secret as long as they agreed to sign a waiver. Only it turns out those waivers were actually the recruitment forms for Park Lane, another direct selling company. And I've got to give it to Miss Mary Grace. That's a pretty creative plan to take people with her. Why try to convince people to join yet another MLM, this time one that sells jewelry, when you can just convince them that they're signing waivers to hear some big mysterious secret? Evil genius, I tell you. But Party Light wasn't quite so amused with Mary Grace's plan. They wound up suing her for an astonishing $2 million in damages, including breach of agreements, misappropriation of trade secrets, and tortious interference, which just means you shouldn't interfere in business relationships. Now, I was not able to find an update on this lawsuit, but I will say $2 million is quite a hefty price to pay. And I mean, I get it. She was trying to very sneakily steal some of the consultants, but $2 million worth of consultants? I don't know about that. But hey, maybe just take this as a warning. If you ever feel like leaving a direct selling company for another, maybe don't have a barbecue to announce it and then try to steal salespeople. It turns out they're not fans of that strategy. But beyond the candles exploding, the lack of any real earning potential, and the lawsuit that may lead some people to become concerned about what would happen if they tried to leave, there's some other issues that came along with the candle company. Customer service seems to hold some things to the imagination, and looking through customer complaints certainly makes it seem like some seller scams are running rampant with no solution in sight. So it's not just working with them you've got to worry about, but it's actually buying from them that's a problem too. Now, if you've ever been to a direct selling party, then you probably know most of the consultants are, shall I say, pushy. Party light consultants don't seem to be much different, at least not according to the reviews. 
While scrolling through consumer affairs, you see review after review after review showing one star about the company. Almost all of them have some sort of story about the consultants themselves. One customer named Jennifer went to consumer affairs to tell her tale about her experience with a consultant named Tammy. It all started out normal. She paid her $24 for some of her products and patiently waited for them to arrive. But after six days of no confirmation and certainly no package full of goodies, she reached out to Party Light only to find that her order had never actually been placed, despite her paying her consultant already. After a massive game of telephone tag, Jennifer finally got a hold of her consultant. She seemed pleasant enough and explained that she decided to place the order herself and send it to her own house. Apparently someone else had messed up and she would just personally deliver the package. At first, this seems fine and all well and good, but Jennifer thought about it for a moment. She had paid for shipping. Seven other people that ordered with Tammy had also paid for the shipping. Now Jennifer was simply pocketing that shipping money. She had ordered, hoping to get her points for future discounts. But since Tammy put her order in through her own account, she got those points instead. This all seemed to point to a scam. Damn it, Tammy. So she did what any normal and reasonable person would do. She called the customer service line. There, a man told her simply to call the consultant, uh, the same one that she thought was scamming her. I'll go ahead and quote her here. Surprise, surprise, Tammy refused to return my call. Finally, after three different phone calls to customer service, one person saved the day and shipped her order out. But Tammy kept her money and Party Light did nothing to fix it. Unfortunately, this can be a massive problem with direct selling companies. No oversight can lead to scams. But hey, what's up with the customer service people? It turns out that's also been a consistent complaint too, which Big shocker, I know. When hosts or consultants go awry, the common idea is to turn to customer service, right? Well, with Party Light, that doesn't seem to be much of an option. Scrolling through consumer affairs and that's all you see all over the place. You can't talk to customer service, no phone calls, only emails. Now, when we're talking about niche companies, small companies, actual startups, I get it that there's limited hours, may not always be a phone call or something readily available, right? They're not multi-million dollar companies. But, but Party Light is, so this is really odd. And let me tell you, this shoots up all the red flags in the world. But that's not the end of the issues with this company. For a company that claims to be all about candles, it doesn't seem like they've been getting the best of reviews and their ingredients are questionable to say the least. And before we continue on to actually talk about some of the issues with the candles themselves, let's go ahead and take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, well, where's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service for almost two years at this point, it all makes perfect sense. There just isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. Now, I use Mint Mobile service for my work phone as well as some of my employees' work phones too. And we've never had a problem being able to get in contact with each other, no matter if it's a phone call, a text message, through an app, like whatever it is, we can always contact each other. And what's really great is we know that we can rely on Mint Mobile to provide top-notch service so that we'll never have problems doing what we need to do to get work done. So for anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans are gonna come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, make sure you go to mintmobile.com MLM. That's mintmobile.com MLM. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com MLM. Today's episode is also sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Sometimes when it comes to online shopping, it can be stressful because when it's time to check out, there's that little promo code right there and gosh dang it, I don't have anything. And boy, would I love 10, 20 or 30% off of the purchase that I'm about to make so that I can save that money to spend it on something else that I need to take care of. Well, thanks to Honey, searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past because Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Now, as many of you know, I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons and what's important for Dungeons and Dragons? That's right, pizza. Did you know that Honey will help you secure a sweet, sweet deal on getting pizza delivered to your place no matter what you're using the pizza for, whether it's to eat it, use it as an accessory for D&D while you're eating it? Well, Honey's got you covered. It was super easy. I went through the whole process of ordering pizza. Then at the uh, promo code section, I let Honey do its thing and find some codes for me, found me a 20% off coupon and voila, pizza. And 20% savings, of course, too. 
And Honey doesn't just work on desktop, it works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari, on your phone, and save on the go. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. And I'd never recommend something that I don't use. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash MLM. Again, that's joinhoney.com slash MLM. Back in the day, the candle making process was a lot more complicated than it is today. Back then, there was no option for a candle factory, no fancy candle holders. It was usually just one person spending hours laboring over their lovely smells in a glass. It all started with a simple pot and some beeswax, lard, or other materials. Throw all those ingredients together, heat them to a formidable temperature, and tie a wick with a weighted material until it reaches the bottom. Then there was the dipping. Someone would have to sit there and continuously dip the wick into the candle every 30 seconds until the wax melted on. This could take over seven minutes, and according to Tony Jack, who owns UK Tapers, it can take up to 45 minutes just to make six candles. Nowadays, the process is simplified, at least for giant candle companies. If you wanna make your own, you can stick to the original methods, which honestly can be really fun, relaxing, and a great way to exercise your creativity. But as the candle making process has changed, there are some places where that original quality has gone down. And as it turns out, Party Lights candles might just be one of those examples. Party Light's vision of a brighter world may be getting to fall flat, at least according to some of their reviews. On their website, they claim to stand by their product 100%. They say it's made with the finest and cleanest ingredients. They even have what they call a no-no list of ingredients which they refuse to include in their specialty candles. And I can absolutely applaud that. They claim there's no parabens, phthalates, sulfates, and over 40 other ingredients. But when they show the list of all the things they promise not to add, a list of what they actually do put in their candles is also nowhere to be found. Their specifications instead only mention the personality, AKA the smell, the type of candle, the burn time, which is usually, it looks like about 25 to 40 hours and the color of the jar. And that's it. And I don't know about you, but if a company makes a huge deal about their sustainability, their use of wonderful products and the importance of candle quality, I would expect them to be a little more upfront about those practices, but it's nowhere to be found. But what about the 100% satisfaction guarantee you ask? Are the customers truly satisfied? Well, if you look through the reviews, it doesn't seem like they are. Firstly, there are the candles that literally go up in flames. We already talked about this, but seriously, why are candles exploding? And why is it happening multiple times? Knowing the ingredients might help shed some light on the situation, but as we just mentioned, that doesn't seem to be a possibility at this time. Then there's a general issue of overall quality because that seems to be lacking too. While some customers report that their scented candles, well, had no scent at all, another reviewer found that after being both a consultant and a customer, she found that the quality of the candles had suddenly diminished. The wicks would barely burn, the scent was gone, and the prices were becoming outrageous. Others who found issues with their candles said they were defective and found massive issues trying to get their warranty from the company. A customer of 20 years said that while the prices are very high, they had appreciated the quality. But recently they claimed that the quality has gone down. After trying to call and email multiple times, they finally received an address to ship back the candle and paid for the shipping. However, she was told that address didn't exist and the candle was sent back to her. With Party Light being one of the largest candle companies and direct selling companies in the country, I just think you would expect a little bit more from them, some sort of better quality, or maybe just some sort of respect and honesty for their consultants. But unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case here. As the company continues to grow, it seems their problems just grow right along with them. I don't hold out much hope that things will get better as they continue pulling in consultants or what they call affiliates seemingly by the day under the false guise of a luxury lifestyle selling luxury candles. But I guess we'll keep watching and hopefully one day we'll have an answer to what I believe to be one of the most important questions with this business. Why the hell are the candles exploding? But hey, those are just my thoughts, my big overall question. I think that's a fair question to ask. And that is also the end of today's episode. I hope you did enjoy it. And I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure you're liking, following and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I wanna thank you so much for making it to today's episode. I really do appreciate it. I know you could be doing a million and a half things in the world and yet you spend a couple minutes with me here. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 